But what if Mukuro, Mukuro herself wasn't killed within the last few days? Oh, what? Certainly you can allow it as one of the many possibilities, can't you? That's true. One of many? A detective doesn't have supernatural powers. How do you know? There's no way to predict the answer from the beginning. Instead, the ideal detective begins by imagining as many possible scenarios as they can. Is that is that part of the detective Probably. doctrine? <laughs> they envision these possibilities without prejudice, without bias, using only their logic and common sense. Then as they investigate, they test what they find against each of these possibilities. Of course, me telling you this doesn't mean you'll be any good at detective work. Yeah, I'm not studying for that shit. But beyond using that to solve this particular mystery, you should keep it in mind for the future. Okay. All right, so that was added. So if there's anything else you'd like to know about the condition of her body, now's the time. Yeah, tell me. Come to think of it, there was one thing. Earlier when I was looking at Mukuro's profile, it listed her height and weight. So, five foot seven, ninety-seven oh, you pounds. That? Vitals were thirty-one, twenty-two, thirty-two. Did I get that right? You remembered all that? They are indeed consistent with the corpse. So then. Indeed. And don't forget about the Fenrir, Fenrir. tattoo. There's absolutely no mistake. Indeed. Our victim in this case is, without a doubt. Mukuro, Mukuro Ikusabi. Isasabi. Isasabi? Or whatever it is. Okay, great. And? Is that all you wanted to ask? Y yeah, I think so. Then it looks like we have no further business with Mukuro's body. Oh, I never showed her the picture. Let's get going. It's kind of chilly in here. Oh, wait. Are we not going to put the body back? Don't you think it's kind of sad leaving it out like this? Oh. Sad? Did you forget? She was our en enemy once. A part of the ultimate despair. But she still got killed. She's still a victim. Have you ever heard the phrase, you reap what you sow? Well, yeah, but still. Hmm. Really naive, you know that. It's really quite appalling. Thank you. But she could have abandoned me, but she decided to help me instead. So for someone like that, what does it mean to be naive? Okay, and all we right. close the door. So I think we're done. All we, I think we've done all we can here. Back to our separate investigations, yes? Ah, hold on. I still have one more thing to do. Something I need to talk to Kyoko about. Oh, that's right, that thing. I need to talk, ask her about the pocketbook. Okay, if I don't do it now... So, yeah, so let me talk to you. Hey, Kyoko, I did have one last thing. I know I shouldn't, but I feel like I have to ask. Go ahead, then. Out with it. Have you really not seen your dad even once since you got here? What? So... What do you mean? Well, you know, all those lockers on the second floor of the dorms. I do, yes. But to get into any of the lockers, you need the handbook or of whoever the locker belongs to. Actually, I managed to get them open using that emergency handbook. The one you found in the headmaster's yeah. hidden room? So, did you find anything worthwhile in the lockers? I found a pocketbook, and after looking through it, I think it might be, must be your pocketbook. Why is that? What makes you say that? Because... Like I said, only the locker's owner should be able to get into it, right? I can't imagine those lockers belong, belong, belong to <laughs> any of us. After all, we only got access to that area recently. What I'm saying is, there's no way I could have had access to any of those lockers. You said that a million times. And if I did have a pocketbook, why would I bother putting it in a locker? Everything you just said makes perfect sense, but there was something written inside. It was about the headmaster, about your father. Whoa. What well, could that mean? The video is real too? What? Video? Makoto. Makoto, I think everything is finally starting to fit together to reveal a cohere cohesive. cohesive picture. Although I'm afraid that picture might be worse than anything we could have imagined. Oh shit. What are you talking about? I need to go investigate those lockers right now. I need to confirm what you just said with my own two eyes. Oh, let me give you the headmaster's handbook. That way you can... So... That won't be necessary. If I'm right about this, I shouldn't have any problem opening the locker with my own handbook. Oh, shit. After all, it would seem that it's my locker. Your locker? If you watch this, it'll all make sense. A DVD? <laughs> I want a fucking Blu-ray, and it says Class 78 Urgent so... Interviews. I found it in that hidden room after you left. Anyway. I don't have time to explain exactly what I think it means, so just watch it and see for yourself. I think you'll realize exactly what it means. You'll understand why you found my pocketbook in a place none of us have ever seen before. None of us, this makes sense right now, but I guess that means there's some important clue on the DVD. All right. Makoto. Oh, and now it's my turn. Do you have a second to listen to me ramble? Ramble? In other words. So as it turns out, the arrangements I've made didn't stick. What? what I mean is, I'm less and less sure of everything, even my own feelings. Uh, you're talking about your dad, right? I can never find the answers to the questions I wanted to ask for the rest of my life. Yeah, that sucks. And all because of the mastermind. However, but there's one thing I am sure of. When it comes to the mastermind, there's no room in my heart for forgiveness. Oh. I... 
I swore to destroy the mastermind. This is just one more reason to follow through on that. Kyoko's eyes burn with the fire of determination. The determination to defeat the mastermind. It's strange to be confronted with his death and suddenly feel this way. Why? I couldn't care less if my father had found happiness. Uh, sh clearly you so do. So why is it... Why does it bother me so much to know how he suffered? It's ridiculous. There's just no understanding it, I guess. She let out a small laugh as she said it, but her smile was filled with sorrow. So, that's it for my rambling. Yay. That's... There's still so much to do before I can consider my task complete. Yeah, you're right. Hey. But keep this in mind. There's only ever one absolute truth. Not if it's Schrodinger's cat. Whether the truth serves justice or suffering. Sch Schrodinger's dick. Whether it's the greatest truth or the worst. What do you mean? Makoto. Even if the truth you uncover is filled with hopelessness, you still can't give up hope. Absolutely not, because because all I can do is keep moving forward. That's pretty much all I'm good at, you know? Indeed. Sorry if that was strange. It wasn't strange. So anyway, I need to get going. Okay, bye. I'll see you in the, at the class trial. Leaving behind that final farewell, Kyoko was gone. I better get going myself. Gotta gotta check out the DVD. Gotta go to the AV room. Hey, there's something about hopeless truth, but no matter what happens, I won't lose hope. Even if it's the worst truth in the world, I can't afford to lose. Really? All right, so off to the uh, AV area, room. Right? And this should be the last thing before the trial. Let's see. So, do 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 Go to the first floor where things are. Yeah. Uh, AV room is right here. AV room. Give me AV room. Uh, okay, so... Now, which of these terminals should I use to watch this porno? Any. Okay. Uh, this should be able to play DVDs just fine. Well, then I better take a look. I took the DVD Kyoko gave me and put it in the player. And it said it was playing, but nothing appeared on screen. I stared into the black of the monitor. It must have been only been a few seconds, but to me it felt like an eternity. And then, all of a sudden, an image appeared. Whoa. Oh, shit. Yes. Sayaka? It took me by total surprise. I hadn't seen Sayaka in who knows how long, because she's fucking dead. Yeah. And there she was. Are you, ready to be you don't need to say anything. I think it's all okay. voiced. The voice I heard was of the man positioned on one side of the screen. It was the voice of a middle-aged man. Apologize, but I hope you don't mind if I record our conversation. Huh. I'm a little slow, you know. <laughs> Are you? I never really got the hang of taking notes while having a conversation. Well, that's not good for a headmaster. It sounded like he was trying to make a joke, but Sayaka's tense face didn't move a single millimeter. So this video is meant to serve as a kind of contract substitute. It's not that I don't trust you guys. It's more like insurance. So please don't worry too much. Geico insurance. Now then, let me get straight to the point. There is a chance that you may have to spend the rest of your life what? here in this room. Yeah. What? Can you accept that? Uh, um. Oh, I guess she's not talking. You can, you can talk if you want. You want me to accept that? Saika was obviously at a total loss. It made total sense. Who would agree to spend the rest of your life in this school? I Which... accept. Oh, I guess she didn't say accept. Okay. What? Thank you. And... I'm sorry about all this. Well, I can promise you that I will do everything in my power Whoa. to keep you safe. Well, this is something. As the headmaster of Hope's Peak Academy. Yep, that's I the headmaster. My word. What? Uh. As if on cue, that's where the video cut out. Well, hold on a sec. There was a lot I hadn't understood up till now, but this, only this, I simply couldn't comprehend what I'd heard. Because I know how much psych I want to get out of here. I know how much she wanted to escape and pursue her dreams with her friends again. She wanted that so bad she tried to frame me for murder. So why? Why would she say yes to living here for the rest of her life? As I sat there thinking about it, I noticed a sudden light. On the monitor, the video that I thought was finished flashed back on screen. My eyes darted back to the screen. Let's see what's on it. And if I was, as, and if I was confused before, what I saw next pushed me right over the edge. And what is it? Him. Yay. <clears throat> You're right. Huh? What I saw was me. Impossibly, undeniably me. So, Makoto, before we begin, I should let you know that I'll be... Yeah, same thing you said to the, him. Me and the headmaster weren't looking at each other. I mean, that kind of looks like... Oh, we're looking at each other, never mind. <laughs> he and I were having what seemed like a fairly normal conversation. But I, the I in the here and now, had absolutely no memory of it. I had no memory of ever meeting the headmaster, much less sitting down to talk to him like this. Shall we get straight to the point, yeah, do it. Look. There's a chance you may have to speak. Yeah, we, we know this. Yes. Whoa. What? This can't be real. I said yes? I'm sorry I'm putting you through all this. Well, I mean, 
don't have much of a choice. Oh my god, there might be like... ISIS everywhere. No, there just might be like... That as long as you're in this school, like what? I will do everything An explosion outside, you. like in a war. Maybe. As the head maybe they're in space. Academy, yeah, maybe. That's the very least I can do for you. A space station. Spacecraft. Spacecraft. Once again, the video cut out. From there, the video repeated the same scene again and again with the others. Oh my god. There's Byakuya. Byakuya. Toko. All with the exact same positions as they normally have. Right. Hina. With her duty head. Yeah, everyone. They all said they agreed to live in this school forever. And then... Hey, there's Kyoko. Kyoko? Her interview with him had been recorded just as clearly. Without a doubt, she had met him. She'd sat down with the headmaster of Hope Speak Academy, her father, and when he asked her his question, she answered the same as everyone else. She accepted a life within the school. Just as Kyoko's interview was wrapping up, the monitor suddenly went black. Huh? It wasn't just the monitor, the DVD player itself had apparently turned off, which of course meant the DVD wasn't playing anymore. What the heck just happened? Say what? Oopsie, looks like it broke out of service. What? It just so happened to break just now? Now then, when does it matter? Failure can strike anywhere, anytime. That's what failure is, right? Now why would he sabotage that? Failure, my ass. You cut the power on purpose. Well, whatever. Even if I watched the whole thing, it'd just be more of the same. He'd ask the same question, and they'd all say yes. I couldn't help myself. I let out a huge, exasperated sigh. But as I did, I remembered something. What? What'd you remember? That's right. I mean, yeah, when she woke up... A, a strange feeling of separation d d within disconnect. myself, thinking back. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, the memory was gone. But what would make right. you forget all that? Strange, isn't it? Yeah. That's right. A convenient outcome. Something that seemed to obviously work in favor of the mastermind. So does that mean I've lost my memory too? Mm -hmm. What about the others? Have we all forgotten? Or... Okay. And that's it. That's amazing. What is... I, I still don't know you what... You still don't know who the no. mastermind is? No. All right. Why, it should tell us from that? Well, we could... If you're smart, you can figure out who it is from what we know now. No, I don't know. <laughs> like, I, I had my suspicions at this point, but I wasn't totally sure. Yep, beginnings are nice. Which is why I'm sure we'll get to meet again. Because the end is only the beginning. Uh, what the fuck is this? What the fuck are you talking about? Oh my god. Alright, back to the red door. Oh my god. Alright. It's about to begin again. The class trial is going to start. The final class trial. The last time all our lives will be on the line. The last time hope and despair are on the line. I don't have a choice. I have to do this. Okay, then. This is the end. And now it's off to the door. Whee! Red door. And here it is. I guess I'm the first one this time. That's Kyoko. That's You're you. early, Makoto. Oh, I guess so. Does that mean you feel prepared? Yeah, for now at least. But where's everyone else? Why aren't they here yet? However, Don't worry, I'm sure they'll be here soon. And just like she said, people started pouring in. Byakuya? Byakuya? <laughs> Why aren't you talking? Really? They arrived one after another, but they were all in the same state of shock. Hina? Hero? No, one, no one's talking. Silence. And it wasn't any normal silence. It was the deafening silence of fear and suspicion. It was like the first class trial. Ooh. You called for me and so I am here. You, you, you want to read or no? A uh, strong, silent master, so wonderful, so cool, so hot, my loins are ablaze. Gross. Ew. Now listen, everyone will be just Everything. fine if you leave it to me. My With my scissor-shaped scissors in hand, I'll stab and gouge and sheave the master she of evil. Well, I mean, you're a killer yourself, but I thought you couldn't kill anyone but adorable little boys. If it's what master wants, it can be boy, girl, or anything in between, I can handle it. Okay, then get us out of here. Achoo! Oh, huh? never mind. Where am I? No human language can describe the disappointment I'm feeling right now. Yeah. Oh, hey. Is everyone here? Ooh, and wearing our gloomy gust faces, I see. Okay, well then, let's begin. The final class trial. Slavin in pitch black despair. Climaxium sorrow. You're Maximum. right. This is the final class trial. And this time, it'll be fair. What do you mean, this time? Stop with all the slander. I'm a bear in good standing, you know? 
If there was a Mr. Fair Guy Universe contest, I'd take home the tiara every year. I'm going to win this game super fair and square. And uh, make sure everyone watching at home knows that despair is mightier than de help. What? <laughs> is he trying to be Jamaican? Enough of your tedious drivel. Begin the trial already. Sure, sure. Let's begin the trial. I'll be waiting for you down below, so don't try and run away. Ah, <laughs> yeah. Please. Laughing as loud as ever, Monokuma disappeared. Hm, whatever. This will be over in no time. With an inexplicable confidence, Byaku was the first into the elevator. One by one, the others followed. Okay, mm -hmm. bye. Bye. And... Yeah. Yugiga. Nobody made eye contact. Nobody said a word. They just disappeared into the elevator. They're all acting odd. Like they're paranoid, suspicious of each other. However, hmm. But you know why that is, don't you? Yeah, I think so. However, well, you can tell us all about it soon. At the class trial. Yeah, you're right. I'm ready. Ready to win, right? Of course. I'm glad to hear you say that. And we're off. And then Kyoko was aboard the elevator. All right. Time for the final elevator ride. I started making my way toward the opening, step by step, toward that gaping maw. I resolved that this would be the last time. I repeated to myself that there was no fear, no mystery left. I pushed the anxiety down, calmed my trembling body, and finally on steady legs, went in. I passed the threshold and stood in the elevator. And he, down we go. Without warning, it began to descend deeper and deeper, 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 still deeper and deeper, 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 deeper and deeper, deeper and deeper, 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 deeper and deeper. It fell. Okay, I was trying to do one of the underground Mario themes in there. Never mind. I closed my eyes and sight fell away. All sound too disappeared. Alone in the universe, I waited for the elevator doors to open for the last time. What could have been seconds or centuries later, I felt the gentle vibration of the elevator come to an end. I slowly opened my eyes. Whoa! It looks like a fucking bomb shelter. This is yeah. the final trial site? What do you think? Isn't it just the perfect background for deciding a person's fate? Yeah. It's the long-awaited last stage, the always excited final boss battle. And I'm gonna sit in on this one. I'll just sit right here in the vacant 16th seat. Well then, let's begin. So he's gonna be he's yeah. gonna be in the 16th seat. So what? he's gonna join in the trial. Alright, and you so- You were recording this, I hope. Of course, okay. yeah. And so that's, uh... That's oh the beginning God. of chapter six. On the next That's session, we're gonna find out oh who the mastermind God, this is. This is just too weird. Yeah. I still don't know. So get two it. more sessions to go. We'll we'll break off the trial to two parts because it's like three hours long. Oh my god, you're kidding me. No, it's like two that hours. Long? Like two and two and a half. Too long. Okay. Okay, we'll see you guys. Bye.